Our goal at Everyday Driver is to help people find affordable cars that are fun to drive. And as a result, we're huge proponents of used cars. We think that's the best way to use your money. And we typically are going to say, get the hottest variation you can find. Well, maybe you want a new car for the warranty. Sure. Or maybe you need some versatility or better fuel economy. Sometimes you might not even be able to afford the insurance or the cost of a turbocharged model. That's true. I mean, in the case of some of the hot ones, I mean, maybe you're a first-time driver. Maybe it's your first car. I mean, that could change the situation. And in those cases, you might be shopping for one of these. That's the standard Mazda 3. This is the standard Subaru Impreza. And that is a Focus. Not the Focus ST, just a Focus. Well, we, we recommend the hotter versions of these cars, but are they fun to drive like this? And this will either be really enlightening or possibly coma-inducing. So today we're driving the 2014 Subaru Impreza. This is a two liter boxer engine. The first two things that Subaru wants you to know are, this is the cheapest all wheel drive vehicle you can buy, and also the all wheel drive vehicle with the best miles per gallon. If you're living in a snow heavy state, those are actually pretty good selling points. But if you're looking for a great driver's car, we're not off to a great start here. Now you might think it's unfair for Todd and I to be applying enthusiast driving outlook or enthusiast driving to these kinds of cars, but sometimes you can't afford to jump into the really hot enthusiast car for reasons of family or you can't afford it or any other kind of reason. The thing about Subaru is they're kind of the official vehicle of the Rocky Mountains. I mean, if you've ever been anywhere in Colorado or Utah or Wyoming, they're everywhere. And that is because they're pretty well bomb-proof, they have good all-wheel drive systems, and they're fairly affordable. In the past year or so, they've had some of the best growth the company's ever had. And of course, when it comes to the WRX and the STI, there's a lot to like about a lot of their vehicles, and they have a real enthusiast flair about them. This is the sport version because it has body-colored rocker panels, which is about the least sporty sounding thing I've ever heard. This Impreza kind of looks like the box a car comes in. It's remarkably boxy on all the corners, very simple in its design. It's not unattractive, it's just bland. Look at the interior. It's actually very simple, clean, and well laid out, and the materials finally just aren't acres of cheap black plastic. This has leather seats. I don't know that you need that in this car, but all the plastics, all of the touch points actually feel really great. It looks cheap down here a little bit around the shifter, but by and large, it's just a pleasing interior. Additionally, Todd and I were both shocked to find the most interior space in the rear seats. This car has acres of space in the back. It feels open and airy. The visibility is great. The materials are good. This is the place where the Subaru shines the most. We've had the discussion a lot of times about it's not always about the power. Well, today it is about the power because it's not a lot, and this car desperately needs more. Of these three, the Subaru makes the least, and you can really feel it. 6,000 RPM the whole way up this mountain just to get any power out of it. You're not gonna outrun anybody. In fact, some minivans will be passing you. It also is equipped with the automatic transmission, and when I say automatic, what Subaru really means is the CVT. A CVT can pick pretty much any ratio of gearing it would like at any time. So you can put your foot to the floor in a CVT, it'll sit at about 4,000 RPMs, never change gear, and the car is constantly accelerating. This is as uninvolving and economical as every CVT on the market. So when you slide the transmission lever over into manual, what it's doing when you select a gear is the computer is selecting pre-programmed points in the CVT that make it feel like second or make it feel like third gear. Now if you force this transmission to hold a ratio and act like a normal transmission, it's actually decent at pulling power out of the engine. But there's nothing enthusiast about this transmission. It's, it's wanting you to not worry about driving. So far, the Subaru is letting me down. It's not that it's a bad car. This thing is very well built. It's not trying to be something it's not, and I respect that. But I wish there were something just a little bit more fun about this car to drive, because chucking this car into a corner, it's really rolling everywhere. 
once you settle it over on its body roll, you can kind of get it to hold a line. But God help you if the corner kinks or becomes a decreasing radius halfway through because the car's just going to plow off into the weeds. There's consistent understeer in the Impreza. There's no real sense that the back is rotating very well, even when you put the power down. Here's the deal. The suspension is too soft, the steering ratio is not quick enough, and there's really not a lot of power from the engine. Additionally, keep in mind there is no sport mode about this car. It's an electric powered steering rack, and the steering feel is, is okay. It's got some decent information coming through. Not a lot, but I can tell when the tires are struggling, which is often. As far as it being a good car, well, yeah, it's, it's great, actually. <laughs> but it doesn't hold a line. It can't hold a line. I think really the only time you're going to be happy is when you're just commuting in this car. And is that okay? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. But that's all it's going to be. You can make it drive hard. It doesn't enjoy it. It's kind of like asking somebody out for the night and they say, well, but if we do that, I've got to go get dressed and there's going to be a lot of people and everything's going to take a long time. And at that point you think, you know what, I don't want to do it now either. Now this version we have here is the Sport Limited, which is of course, as a press car, the loaded version. It's about a $25,000 car. Now, you don't want this car as a $25,000 car. You don't need the leather. You really don't want the CVT transmission. The version you want is probably just the premium, which gets you a five-speed, it gets you things like Bluetooth and adds cruise control and has 16-inch wheels. A lot of the stuff you want is in that version. And you can probably get out for a little over 20 grand. That starts to become a pretty good car. For me, there is not a shred of enthusiast driving about this car which is disappointing because I got into this car thinking I, I wanted it to do something. I thought it was going to surprise me a little bit, and it just hasn't. The Subaru Impreza is a good car. It's an affordable car. It's an efficient car. It's a very roomy car. It's not a fun car, and that is what we're looking for here. Was this a lukewarm day or was this an enthusiast uh, it, it driving day? It wasn't coma inducing. That's the thing. It actually was kind of informative. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The, the lukewarm hatches.